Brian Little. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Months and Made This. My name is Michael, I cook vegan food. So if you're interested in that, definitely click the subscribe button below and go ahead and give it a thumbs up while you are down there. Today I am proving the adage that it's all about the sauce because I am making three delicious, incredibly flavorful cauliflower street tacos. And it's all about the sauce with these three. I have a buffalo style one, I have a teriyaki style one, and a, believe it or not, BLT style one. Uh, and they all come down to this humble cauliflower that we're gonna season up real delicious like. So I'm gonna show you how I like to cut up this cauliflower and give you kind of a cauliflower butchery lesson. Uh, so let's go into that and then I'll talk a little bit more about these recipes while I'm doing that. So cauliflower, I like to start out and uh, just kind of flip it upside down. I also like to use a paring knife or a small knife to do this. And I'm just going to work my knife around the core and I'm gonna be removing these leaves uh, as well as try to start removing some of the bottom stalks. Now, one thing I don't want you to do is to cut down this way. If you cut down this way, you're gonna wind up with cauliflower confetti because you're gonna break up all these florets. But if we're working from the bottom, like I am here, we're gonna be able to pull these apart and work in a way so that we don't really wind up with a lot of mess and we get the most yield out of this cauliflower. So as the leaves are coming off, working down more and more, and we can actually start to remove the core, which we're not gonna waste. We'll actually be using that in the tacos as well. Uh, this size here is kind of about the size that we're gonna eventually want for the tacos. And I have a salad spinner here. This is what I'm gonna be using to store the cauliflower as I cut it up. And we're actually gonna use that to rinse and dry the cauliflower, because it's kind of important that we use uh, dry cauliflower for this, just so it cooks up a lot nicer and uh, the sauce sticks to it. So as I'm working through, when I can pull them out into large chunks, I will do that. Notice we're not really making much mess. We'll save that. And then I'll show you how we break down these larger pieces in just a second. So I'm just working around, picking these off. These are all too big, but like I said, just a sec, I'll show you how we'll break those down. And we're gonna use everything, the stock. We might have to break this kind of one down a little bit, but it's okay if we use this stock part. It's just as delicious and sweet, just like the rest of the cauliflower. And you don't really notice it as anything different once it's in the taco. So continuing to break these down. Now again, this size, uh, as we get towards the top, this is gonna be kind of the size that we're gonna be shooting for. So I'm just gonna be picking these off one by one. And as we get really small here, this is kind of the very top of the crown. I'm just gonna cut the nub off the bottom. And when we do cut into it, like you'll see in just a second, we wanna work from the bottom and kind of split it. We don't ever wanna cut from top to bottom. We wanna kind of work from the base of the stalks and pull them apart that way. And as you can see, after breaking that whole thing down, we only have, well, we're gonna be using those, but this is pretty much all we have that we're not going to be using of the cauliflower. So let's start breaking these parts down. And actually, before I break these down, I wanna start off the rinsing process. So I'm just gonna put this in the sink and start to fill this with water. Now I'm gonna fill it up pretty far, or pretty full here, and then I'm gonna work through this while it's filled with water to break these down, and that just is so it continues to kind of rinse off if there's any dirt or debris or anything like that, it'll sink to the bottom, and then we can spin it dry, and they're perfectly clean and ready to be sauced. I'm going to continue to break down these two pounds of cauliflower. Now, each of the recipes, as they are on MunsonMadeThis.com, which will be linked below, calls for one pound of cauliflower. I'm gonna be trying to make all three uh, with uh, the, two, the two pounds. I'll just have to do a little bit of division, but I'm just gonna break these up and get them into the size pieces that I mentioned earlier, about this size. You want them, I guess, technically bite size, uh, even though they will kind of shrink up a little bit in the oven. And then the stock pieces, uh, I'm gonna just use those again, just kind of break them down a little bit into bite-sized pieces. 
So it takes a couple of minutes, but I do think it's worth it to do it this way, just so that you have these perfect florets and you don't waste any of the cauliflower and you make very little mess. So I've got it all broken down to the size that I want. And you can see there's very little of the confetti. The last thing I wanna do is just move this aside so I can break down these last couple of pieces. So this is just a piece of the core. Also, if you saw me cutting the cauliflower in my hands over the bowl of water, if you're not that comfortable with your knife skills to do that, please definitely put it on the cutting board. Be careful, um, know your own skill level. If what I just did is uh, triggering for you because you think it's unsafe, then definitely do what is safe for you. Uh, right here, I'm just cutting around the core. Any of the tough bits in the very bottom, I'm removing. And then I'm gonna just kind of break these up into small squares that are about the same size as the florets, maybe a little bit smaller. And that is it. The leaves pieces, I guess you could technically eat these leaves. Uh, I'm just gonna compost them uh, along with this. And that's pretty much it for the cauliflower. I'm gonna drain it, I'm going to spin it so it's nice and dry, and then I'll show you what we do next. So I have my dried cauliflower here, and we're gonna be tossing this with a little bit of oil. For the teriyaki version, I'm gonna be tossing it with some sesame oil, and the other two, I'm just going to be using some olive oil. Now, because I'm doing three flavors of tacos uh, in this video, when normally each one would be a half head of cauliflower, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball a third and a third. Um, actually, let's do the olive oil ones first. So. Two thirds are gonna go in the bowl here right now. Again, kind of just ignore this in terms of the third part because it's just for this video. Uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil and this is going to help them to crisp up a little bit. It's also gonna help with flavor. If you wanted to do these oil free, you absolutely could. Um, I just do think that they help with the texture. So these are getting tossed around with some olive oil. And I'm gonna just put these on the baking sheet. So this is two thirds of it right here, ideally. So pushing these to one side. This section will be divided a little bit later as well. And then I'm gonna use this metal chopstick here as my divider. And then I'm gonna put the last third in this bowl. These are for the teriyaki ones. I'm going to have a little bit of sesame oil. Toss this around. Toss in the sesame oil. And then these are going on here. Oops. All right, so eventually there will be another divider in here. Um, if I notice any pieces that look really big, I'm gonna kind of break those up. But otherwise, this is ready to go into the oven. This cooking technique I think is the best in terms of getting it to the right texture as well as how the flavor adheres to it later. So the oven is preheated to 425. They're gonna go in for 20 minutes, just like this. After 20 minutes, they're gonna come out, get tossed in their seasoning or their sauce, and then they go back in for another 20 minutes and they're done. That amount of time in the oven allows us to make the sauces and the toppings, which is great. Um, but if you wanted to do your own flavor combinations or play with things, um, just follow that same guideline. 425, 20 minutes, Take it out, season, 20 more minutes. So let's put these in the oven for their first 20 minute bake. And then we'll start to make the accessories. For these three tacos, there are two different sauces. One of them is a ranch dressing. And this is a ranch dressing I've been working on for a while now. It is my pizza shop salad bar style buttermilk ranch and it's made with my homemade vegan yogurt. The recipe is on the website. There will be a video about it soon, but uh, you can get the recipe right now. So this is going to be going on the buffalo cauliflower taco as well as the BLT one. So um, this one's already made, so that'll just go in there. The other sauce is a wasabi cilantro cream sauce and this is for the teriyaki taco. Now, if you uh, watched a video from a long time ago for Asian nacho cups, um, 
the sauce is very similar to that as well as the flavor profile of this is very similar to that. I'll have that linked above. Um, it uses tofu. So if you wanted to make these tacos with tofu instead of cauliflower, definitely just use that recipe. Uh, I'm gonna start throwing the ingredients for this into the magic bullet and uh, we'll blend it up and that's pretty much it for this sauce. First thing is vegan mayo. I'm using best foods today. So it's just a half cup of this. To that, I need an equal amount of my homemade soy yogurt. If you did not want to use the mayo, um, I have a package of silken tofu here. You could use something like silken tofu instead of the mayo. And if you didn't want to take the time to make the soy yogurt, you could make your own kind of soy milk buttermilk by just using a half cup of soy milk, or you can even do it with almond milk and just about a teaspoon of uh, lemon juice or rice wine vinegar, and it'll kind of thicken up a little bit and give you that same tangy taste. Uh, all right, so we have the two sauce components there. Now we're going to add about an equal amount. So we had a half cup of each of those. So we're gonna add about an equal amount of fresh cilantro. If you didn't like cilantro, um, I guess you could use something else like parsley. Um, or you could even just leave it out. The wasabi cream sauce without that is really delicious. And uh, I have wasabi powder here. Two teaspoons of this. Uh, doesn't come out too, too spicy with two teaspoons. If you're worried about the spice, definitely use less. Um, if you like more spice, definitely add more. So that's it. Uh, I'll probably add a pinch of salt in just a moment, but the lid's gonna go on and then we blend it up. I'm gonna add just a pinch of salt here. And then I'm going to scrape down the sides and bottom just to make sure everything gets blended. Now I'm going to be adding this to a squeeze bottle just like I have here for the ranch dressing. I think especially for these kind of tacos, squeeze bottles are amazing. You could easily just spoon it on there, but um, you can find those squeeze bottles pretty much everywhere now. So you might want to invest in a couple cause they're amazing for applying sauces to food. And as a vegan, you're always applying sauce to food. So blend it up one more second and then that's it for this sauce. The sauces are chilling in the fridge. We have just a few minutes left of the first half of the cooking of the cauliflower. So uh, I'm not gonna get into the pico stuff just yet, but I am gonna talk about a very important component and that is cabbage. And I'm using green cabbage here. And I think in terms of flavor and crunch, you owe it to yourself to use green cabbage. You could use some shredded iceberg lettuce if you want, but green cabbage just has such a sweet flavor. It's so perfectly crunchy. And I think it's just the best thing to tie all of the flavors together. And especially with the cauliflower, you know, it's gonna get a little bit tender, but having this on there just adds the freshness that I think that you miss with something that's a roasted dish like this. So I'm just trying to cut this as thin as possible, kind of moving it around as a, you know, to avoid having too long of pieces. And these tacos are by no means traditional in, in any way. I'm not trying to pretend that they are, but I do feel that uh, it is fairly traditional on uh, street tacos that I get at restaurants that they do have cabbage, and I think it's something that just completely makes the taco. And that's pretty much it. Just take it down as much as I can until I get to the nub. Um, this is a quarter of a cabbage, and this is quite a bit. I feel like a quarter is probably a perfect amount for um, what this batch of tacos makes. The first 20 minutes are up, so I'm going to take the cauliflower out. And they're just gonna be kind of shrunk down a little bit. They're gonna smell great, but they're not going to be brown, really. There's, there's a, a light bit of browning, but not too much. So what I wanna do is just kind of work in batches of the different flavors. Obviously, if you were doing a whole pan, all of one, uh, you would just dump it all in, but we're gonna start with the teriyaki flavor. 
So this has been tossed with sesame oil and this is just the same bowl from the beginning. Hopefully I'm not spilling too much. And this is just gonna get tossed with a store-bought teriyaki sauce. I'm using the soyaki from Trader Joe's. If I lost any more. And this is kind of my favorite go-to teriyaki sauce. Um, I would say you're gonna need about maybe like a third or a quarter of a cup. The idea here is that once they've dried out a little bit in the oven like this, they're gonna be able to suck up this sauce. There will still be a little bit of a puddle at the bottom, but that's cool, we can dump that onto the top of them. But you can see the color of the florets has changed because it's sucked up the sauce. And that's one of the benefits of doing this first baking. So I'm just gonna pour these back onto the baking sheet. That was pretty simple, right? So this side had just all the olive oil in it. I'm taking half of this to use for the buffalo flavor. And I have another of my metal chopsticks um, ready to go here so that it can be the separation between the other two flavors. Because after we do the buffalo one, then we will do the bacon style one. Let's see, that looks pretty good. I think that looks like a third. So the same thing what we did with the teriyaki, we're just gonna sauce this up. And with this one, you, you wanna cook it with quite a bit of sauce here, and then we'll actually sauce it again as it goes on to the taco. If you don't like spice, um, I don't really know what to tell you. If you're wanting to do buffalo, I think, uh, I mean, buffalo to me isn't that spicy, but I love spicy things. And the same thing is happening again here. You can see that the cauliflower, because of that first 20 minute cook session, has started to just kind of suck up that buffalo sauce. All right, so putting my chopstick there, and these are going on the baking sheet. All right, this is gonna get rinsed out, and then we will make the bacon seasoning. The BLT taco was inspired by some bacon almonds that I made for a frozen peas video. So I'm just using the same bacon flavoring uh, for that to toss in the cauliflower. So that is just a few simple ingredients. Oop, a little bit more there. So this is just nutritional yeast that I'm adding there. And I'm adding some smoked paprika. This, as well as some liquid smoke, are going to give it the smoky flavor. And I'm trying to just use a little bit less because, again, I'm making a slightly smaller recipe using just a third of it here. Um, we have some black pepper. I like a little bit of spice, so I'm going to be adding some red pepper flake. A couple of dashes here of liquid smoke. And then the saltiness comes from Bragg's Liquid Aminos. And we're going to have two parts of that. Oops. And then one part of maple syrup. So I'm just going to whisk this together. And then I will toss the cauliflower in here. Sound is awful. Let's use this. Smells incredible. I'm also gonna to be topping these with some of those bacon almonds, so um, maybe you wanna make those as well that can go on top. All right, let's throw the cauliflower in. And then once these go back onto the tray, everything will go back into the oven, 20 more minutes. We'll work on the kind of relish or pico type of condiments that'll go on top and then we're ready to assemble. I have my three flavored cauliflower here and I'm just gonna put them back in the oven for 20 more minutes. And while those cook, let's make the toppings. So each of the tacos has a different P 
pico or relish that's going to go on top. So all three of them have onions, so I'm just going to break up the onion and separate it into these three different jars. I have onion here for all three of them. For the buffalo chicken, I'm making kind of a I'm celery pico, I guess is what I've been calling it. It's kind of just a relish. It's basically just celery and onion. And for just uh, for pretty, I'm slicing it like this, as thin as I possibly can. And I'm just gonna go up this entire stock so that when you see these on top of the tacos, they just have kind of a cool appearance. You know what they are, and it just kind of sells that whole buffalo vibe. And um, you could add cilantro to this one. I'm gonna keep this one pretty simple with just the celery, onion, and some jalapeno for a little bit more heat. This looks like a good amount. So I'm just gonna put this into the jar and then I am going to add the juice of half of a lime, a pinch of salt and the jalapeno, which I've already just pre-minced. And that's it for this one. It just adds like a perfect little bit of acidity and crunch and flavor that like I said, it just really brings home that whole buffalo vibe. And the thing about these street tacos is that they're like, they've got kind of a lot going on. There's a lot of flavors. There's like sweetness and spiciness and savoriness. And um, you need the acidity to balance all that out. Here's the jalapenos. Add as much or as little as you want. And these can be made ahead of time. You can make them right before. Uh, it's not as if they need to really like come together. It's okay if the flavor components are still kind of separate. So that's it for the celery. I'm just gonna call it a celery pico. The next one we're gonna make is a pineapple pico and this one is for the teriyaki tacos. I am just using canned pineapple in the juice here. And for the amount that I'm making here, I'm going to need four rings. If you had access to fresh pineapple, that would be amazing. You could definitely use that, but canned works perfect here. And I'm just gonna cut these up into little, I don't know, I want it to be about the same size as the onion, just so everything is pretty uniform. Don't worry about it being perfect. In addition to that cilantro, I'm adding some jalapeno, again, as much as you'd like. The juice of half of a lime. And a pinch of salt. The last one we're gonna make is just a classic pico with tomatoes and onion, and we're gonna keep it pretty much just those two things so we can have that BLT flavor. We have just about a minute left on the cauliflower, perfect amount of time to make this last pico. So I'm just gonna cut up these tomatoes. I learned kind of a cool trick the other day, cutting uh, tomatoes like a uh, red pepper where you go around the perimeter so that you kind of leave the seeds in the center. Obviously you're gonna have a few little bits, but definitely better than if you were to cut it in half and the work you have to do to get all those seeds out. So helpful tip of the day. And these are just gonna get cut into little pieces, same size as the onion. Here is the tomato into this jar. And I'm not gonna add any cilantro to this one just because cilantro is a very strong flavor and I don't want it to go in that direction. But the lime juice is good. So still adding the lime and I will add a little bit of jalapeno as well. and a pinch of salt. All right, so that is all three of those. We have the kind of classic tomato version. Shake it up there. We have the celery version. Shake that all up. 
And finally, the Pineapple Pico. All right, those are all set. My timer just went off, so I'm going to pull these out of the oven. Actually, let's just do that right now. They smell incredible. You can see they've got some color. They've reduced a little bit more, but they're still gonna have a good chew to them. There's a meatiness to these, so these can hang out while I clean up, and then we are ready to make tacos. I have my taco holder ready to go. I just got that on Amazon. Um, I'll have a link below to my Amazon page. You can find that if you want. Uh, I also have two different types of tortillas here. I have a street taco flour tortilla and a street taco white corn. Um, I think that the flour tortilla is really great for the buffalo, and I really like the corn for the teriyaki one, and uh, the BLT one is great with both, so I'm just gonna do one flour and two corn here, just for our assembly. But I am so excited. These are just gonna warm on both sides, so they're nice and soft. Put them in the taco holder, and then we'll fill them with the uh, cauliflower, we'll top them with the sauce, the cabbage <laughs> there's so many things i'm forgetting the cabbage and then our individual picos or relish I'm so excited let's make some tacos first one we're going to do here is the teriyaki cauliflower and you can put as much or as little as you want this whole thing probably makes about i would say 12 to 14 tacos so the cauliflower is there i'm going to top it with some of this crispy, crunchy cabbage. Uh, I like to add the sauce first. Be quite generous with your cilantro wasabi sauce. And then top with the pineapple pico. That one's done. Next one is the buffalo cauliflower taco. Start out with the buffalo cauliflower. And actually, I like to add a bit more of the buffalo sauce. Top with cabbage. Generous bit of this ranch dressing. And then top with the celery pico. Last one is the BLT. bacon cauliflower, top that with cabbage, ranch dressing, some of our tomato pico, and then if you have it, a couple bacon almonds. And there we have these delicious cauliflower tacos three ways, teriyaki, buffalo, and BLT. To be completely honest with you, when I first saw cauliflower tacos on a menu, I was thinking I would never order those. Like cauliflower is kind of like a negative space. Why would you have that as like the meat of a taco? But I decided to give it a try for myself and I am truly obsessed with these. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and do my favorite part, which is the taste test. Um, let's start with the teriyaki, uh, I wanna say teriyaki chicken, but I guess just teriyaki cauliflower. And uh, this was inspired, like I said, by my Asian nacho cups. So um, I'll have that recipe linked. And if you wanted to do this with tofu instead of the cauliflower, you can definitely do this. And this just has a very similar flavor profile. So here it goes. It is pure, like it pulls in so many directions. It has the most incredible teriyaki flavor. The wasabi comes out, the pineapple comes out, the little bit of the heat from the wasabi, 
It's got the kind of meatiness of the cauliflower, which just the texture of this is so perfect. Plus the crispiness of the cabbage. It's just everything you could ever want. A little bit of acidity from that lime juice. It is a perfect taco, I promise you. If you give, well, you gotta try all three, but I would say if you're gonna start somewhere, start with that one. Uh, let's go to the buffalo cauliflower now with this amazing ranch dressing. And this one was done with the flour tortilla. And it has the celery. I don't know if I feel right calling it a pico, but to keep on brand, I guess. Again, it's like every flavor comes through individually, but comes together. That ranch is perfect. I love the crispiness of the celery, the little brightness from, I mean, the buffalo sauce is acidic anyways, but then also the, the lime juice, it's, it's perfect. Uh, and the last one, the BLT with what I'm calling bacon cauliflower. Mm. If you like any sort of a, like chicken bacon ranch type of things, it's definitely that flavor profile where you have the sweet, smoky, salty bacon, you have then the ranch, you have the fresh tomatoes, crispiness of the cabbage, excuse me. I promise you, these are perfect foods. So please give these a try. If you do, tag me with your pictures on Instagram at Munson Made This and follow me over there while you're at it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to continue uh, watching me eat these tacos, then go over to my Patreon, which is months and ate this. The link for that will be below as well. So thank you for all the subscribers that are here, new and old. I really appreciate it. I'll be back next week with a brand new video. So thank you for watching and enjoy making these amazing cauliflower tacos.